All right, second to last stage of Perry Knees. And uh, I thought I'd do a little image that sort of talks a bit about uh, why this is a team sport. So I'm just now getting laid in one of the riders who has, I'm not quite sure, he may have just be giving his own bottle away, but here you'll see that in a second. But so this race, this particular race, it's seven man teams. And apparently according to the uh, commentators, Bob Roll and Christian Vandevelder, that uh, there's a flu going through. Now part of it is early on, they kept calling it the Jumbo Visma flu, meaning that uh, that team was doing so well and winning everything that Riders were like, yeah, screw it. I'm going home. I haven't got much chance here. But uh, I do think that was just in jest. And then uh, it seems a little bit less now, less like they have a stranglehold on the race, although they do hold the leader's jersey by almost 40 seconds with just today and tomorrow's stages left to race. So I'm getting this laid out. And so what's happening is this rider has pulled a bottle out of his pocket and ridden up to uh, Nairo Quintana, his team leader, and is now passing the bottle over to Nairo. Ooh, I was a little worried I was going to run out of room there. <laughs> Since kind of the main point of this race, this painting is the passing of the bottle. That would kind of suck if I didn't uh, have enough room to actually show that. Now that's one of the things, of course, I'm sketching with uh, a Sharpie and uh, clearly a permanent marker. It is a fine point one. And, uh, but what that means is if I make a mistake, well, I made a mistake. And Either I have to live with it or pitch the piece of paper. So earlier on, I had done a painting and started to sketch out a photographer, and it was totally wrong. So just threw that aside, and we'll keep going. You know, just started another one. And the other one, if you go to the um, my blog, the art of cycling dot com, and I'll put that in the comments section plus I'm pretty sure it's also on my um, bio but you can see that particular painting which I think is called He's Gone you can see the successful version of that painting so right now I don't know the names other than Nairo of these riders but they are riding for Arkea Samson and just ahead are two more of his teammates. They're all on the front of the peloton. Nairo being a Colombian, although there are some Colombian sprinters, is a particularly good climber. When you grow up and the valleys are at the height of most of the alpine passes, you tend to be a very good climber just because you have the lung capacity. Obviously, being able to process oxygen and perform in low oxygen circumstances is absolutely essential in cycling. And let's face it, you know, NASCAR is all about the super high octane gasoline. Cycling is all about the ability to process and generate energy, burning the oxygen and fuel in your body. So having the ability to blow more air through your lungs, generate more energy with less air is an essential skill <laughs> ability. In fact, the whole Lance Armstrong doping centered on making his blood more able to process oxygen, which made him a better climber, which ultimately climbing is what wins the Tour de France. So 
So these are the mountains. They're right down in the Rhone Valley near the Mediterranean Sea, but about to head up into the um, the Marentine Alps. So this is sort of the image I wanted to work with. Let's get some of the team demarcation onto these jerseys. But so riders like like this, they are referred to as domestiques and they're on the team to do the work of chasing down brakes or getting water bottles or whatever's needed, setting the pace on the front, which is what the two that are off camera are doing, all in service of their team leader's aspirations to winning a stage or winning the race overall. Now, Nairo was, was definitely tapped I mean, he is the race, the team leader, and was certainly expected to be one of those to compete for overall. Unfortunately for Nairo, he has never quite mastered. He's an incredible climber, and we're learning now, particularly earlier in this race, his ability to be in the right place when the race blows apart in the crosswinds. But his inability in the race against the clock in the time trial means that he is currently two minutes off the pace over that actually two and a half minutes maybe even more he along with everyone else lost about 30 seconds on the first day because of the aggressive riding of Rugama FDJ, no, sorry, wrong team. Jumbo Visma taking all three of their guys as the three first three across the line. And that sort of set them up to, um, well, that's all the yellow jerseys, while they've not been all on the same rider, they have been on, all on the same team. So, as always, laying in the warm colors first, and then I'll come back and work my way down through the color wheel going from warmest to coolest, lightest to darkest. Now in this particular painting um, image that I'm working from, there is no yellow visible. So I, that's why I started with the flesh tones. And then I will be doing you know, each progressively cooler color as I go. Oh, that's what that is, okay. Sorry, I got myself lost there for a second. And that's one of the things, and that's, you know, particularly when you first start painting the image, it's like I've drawn it and I knew where I was going, but then sometimes I get a little lost and that's fine. You know, that's, my wife long ago referred to painting as striving for imperfection. And for my work, that's an absolutely true goal. I'm, clearly this is not hyper-realistic. I'm not interested in hyper-realism. Hyper-realism also would be difficult at this speed. I'm sure there are people who can do it. I'm not one of them. Part of the reason I'm not one of them is because I have no real desire to do that. That's not, that's not to me the point. It's like, that's a skill set. Being able to reproduce something as it appears is a great skill set and something you do need to work on. So that my exaggerations and distortions and variations on what the reality is are 
based on knowledge. So you draw the figure, and I do, I go and work from the model occasionally. As you draw the figure and you work and work and work, you learn how the figure fits and moves in space. And based on that knowledge, you create the work. But there's variations and exaggerations or whatnot. I hesitate to say is where the art comes in, but it is where the art comes in. If my goal was simply to reproduce, let's face it, what the video has already shown me, what's the point? The video has already shown it to me. So I'm not trying to be a camera. And that's the thing about art. I'm interpreting. It's a two-dimensional reproduction, representation of a three-dimensional reality. And uh, so that's sort of the goal here. And because of that, I'm allowing some interpretation to creep into the image. So now I've laid in the reds. I'm going to shift now, I believe, to the mountains behind. So these are limestone mountains that crash down into the Mediterranean Sea. In the uh, opening credits of this and the sort of the helicopter flyby, there's actually one shot they keep showing of what appears to be a fairly fresh light landslide. So it is literally the rocks crashing down, down the side of the mountain, not into the sea. But these are, um, there was actually a the Tour de France, I believe, two years ago. They had to shorten the stage and it was kind of controversial because the shorting may have changed who won the race because there was supposed to be another mountain but they couldn't go up that mountain because the only road down that mountain led to a landslide and it was a hailstorm and everything else it was a nasty day in the tour so that's sort of getting the mountains in now i'm going to switch over to the um evergreen trees first gonna lay in some of this the dark shadows under the evergreens and that's just my black tone that I make this purple and this dark green but clearly more green than purple in this case and now using that same green I'm just going to mix it in that same dirt just adding more green so just sort of you know creating these clumps of evergreen that are holding on to the rock faces. Because the way the mountain grows, there are these shelves. You know, it's the whole plates, the crust having been pushed up and it creates these little shelves and the trees get into that dirt and their roots break it up, and so it slowly creates areas where the trees can grow. All right. So now I'm going to do create the black that I was just talking about. So. This deep purple, like a deep thalo purple, and then this dark green, which has a bit of blue in it, creates this lovely black. The team was wearing, and it's cold today. I mean, there was actually some fear that there would be snow on top of the mountain today. So they're all wearing their 
arm warmers at this point. It is a bit ironic. So I've always said that the south of France down along the Mediterranean coast is very similar climatically to uh, Virginia to the eastern coast of the United States, the Mid-Atlantic. And it certainly is um, on the same latitude. So the um, weather te tends to be the same. So it is actually currently snowing outside here on the 12th of March. And snow is expected on the mountaintops in today's stage. But since it is a mountaintop finish, they don't go back down the other side of the mountain racing. Um, I actually haven't heard whether it's actively snowing, but there is no plan safety need to stop to not go up the mountain because like I say they're not racing back down obviously being on a road bike with its skinny tires although the tires have gotten a lot bigger since I raced I'm not quite sure of the physics of it but it has been figured out that it's actually no less aerodynamic, no less, um, no more friction with a larger size tire. So now, like my current bike has 28 millimeter tires. That's the width of the tire, the amount of tire hitting the road versus the 23s. And we're talking, um, Millimeters, I think. Clearly, centimeters, that would be almost two feet. Um, so just laying in the uh, bikes of these two riders. And yet again, I failed to title the artwork before I start painting it, which is not my normal pattern. Here, we'll call this Passing Out Drinks. So now all that's left to do is this little bit of roadway. Got to adjust the timeout feature on my TV. <laughs> so this is just Cliff Road that we're seeing back around. So this is the road behind and it swings around to where we are now. Can't really see them, but there are just a few of the following team cars way back there in the background. Like I say, they're not really visible, so I didn't add them to the painting. And this was called the following caravan, all the support vehicles, first of the teams. And then the other support vehicles with the press motorcycles, the doctor's car, because they actually, if they are feeling unhealthy, they will go back. Or if they've got a cut or whatnot, it's always interesting to see riders being bandaged as they ride down the road. So, just finishing this one up. So hopefully you like what you're watching. You're learning a little something about bike racing and watercolor painting, painting in general. While you watch this, again, the blog is theartofcycling.blogspot.com. The website is gregleach.com. Twitter is 
Art of Cycling, and Instagram is Greg Artist. So, thanks for taking a look. Give me a like, give me a thumbs up. Check out my other social sites, and see you again soon. Oh, here, I'll give you a little peek. A little shadow on that, but so it goes. Thank you again.